How could the world, all 7 billion of its inhabitants, as well as every other species, be saved in such a short amount of time? I mean, that is stupidly quick. Not just to identify the problem, but not, to, not just to identify the problem and its solution, but to actually make the whole project and carry it all out. Believe it or not, we've actually seen developments like this before. The Manhattan Project developed the A-bomb in just three years, and the whole space race went from the first object in space in 1957 to landing a whole crew on the moon in 1969, just 12 years later. Now, take the base of these ideas. They are massive scientific developments which are done in just a few short years. What's stopping us today from taking 100 scientists, giving them a bunch of resources and power, and doing the same for other kinds of problems? Well, all these other problem projects that I mentioned before have a few things in common. War, uncertainty, survival. They were all made during a time when our backs were against the wall, and we had to bring them about so we could survive, win, and escape times of war. While this remains a fact, I am an adamant supporter that a process like this to solve the world's biggest problems could be recreated artificially for the sake of scientific development. Think of it like leaving home for an appointment early to account for any kind of problem that you may have on the way. But except what we're doing now is coming together, all of us, every country, to form an initiative to solve our problems before we see them coming and before we have no room for error. Come with me to explore a hypothetical world if we did something like this. The main strategy that I will be employing behind this whole process is called effective altruism, which is a research field and practical community which aims at finding the best ways at helping others using evidence and statistics from extensive research. Now, effective altruism believes that the main threats that humanity faces today are climate change, world hunger, and celestial threats. But I think that climate change is the most interesting one and compelling one out of these three, given how it is a complex problem that can be approached from a number of different ways. From here on, I'll be, using, I'll be using it as my primary example. After this whole organization to save the Earth is created, it would, mean, it would start having extensive research on every member state's economic capabilities and exact role in the issue to determine the right course of action for every country. This would involve the establishment of a research division, which would involve the hiring of thousands, thousands of employees all around the world. Now, let's actually step back a little bit. How would a whole organization like this work, one that has control over every country in the world? Well, an executive board would manage all decisions and assign trained personnel to act as attaches to other countries to carry out the organization's orders within that other country. This would involve requisitions, working with the government, and making changes to the policy whenever necessary. And of course, all of these policy, all this policy would be derived from the research made from the division that I mentioned previously. Also, laws and other guidelines would be implemented into other countries. These laws would take immediate priority over any other kinds of laws inside the country in order to fulfill the schedule of the program. These could be like reducing carbon dioxide output by having fewer cars on the road. And this could even become more strict if goals are not met. We can only hope that with the continued efforts of every country around the world and the eyes and hands of the organization everywhere, it will be successful. And the world will reach the view that we all want for it. But would it really? This is a section of thinking that I call the fallout. What comes after? I mean, this is a hypothetical school of thought given the fact that we're glimpsing into the world after massive change. I mean, undoubtedly, the central development would succeed. I am a strong believer of that fact. Because after 30 years of contra carbon dioxide measures, the world would reach the view that we want for it. Environments would be unharmed, assumedly, and we'd all live 
pretty happily ever after. Except that won't be the whole case. The first problem of actually getting to that point is politics. Not only is it pretty much impossible to get 193 countries to bend to a single will, but they won't do it out of protecting their citizens. See, the United Nations has some kind of power over a country in the international spectrum, but cannot actually go into a country and tell its government how to run it. That's a little known term known as Westphalian sovereignty. Now, now also, more money also poses a large problem. Entire countries' economies are based on oil. And given that the fact that we're proposing climate change reduction, a large part of this would mean a reduction in carbon emissions. Given this fact, some of the world's largest countries could be at odds, which could mean, at worst, a world war. Moreover, the effects of this whole situation also pose a threat. Like, will we get our rights and freedoms after the fact? Will our lives be the same? And most importantly, what's stopping somebody from doing it all again? But, I mean, won't we all be safe? Won't it all work out? Because if we start preparing for a problem that's going to happen in 300 years, we'll be more prepared than if we only start preventing it from happening when we know it will happen. This all is well and good, and the fact about saving the world by putting so many resources into it is good, but also with that comes a possibility. A line from the book that I mentioned previously, which is titled Project Hail Mary, mentions that the director of the space program aimed at saving the Earth would likely face serious jail time and consequences after the whole program was over due to a breach of liberty and an abuse of power unlike any in human history. And it's really that fact that trumps everything, that singular topic, that which can really cause discord for everybody on Earth and make sure that only a few people come out winning. That's what makes me want to stop and just go to sleep. As we exit this hypothetical ride that I took you on, we can see that this idea greatly exaggerates the lengths that we have to go to to protect those that come after. I mean, throughout its history, Earth has played host to billions of people, and each one has left the world in a manageable state for the next generation. But only as we've reached this new millennium have we realized that we have a task on our hands, not just for solving climate change, but for protecting the world against any other large threat that may arise. Of course, I use the, the notion of previous generations not to place the blame, but to introduce another hypothetical situation. What if those that came before us gave something of theirs for our future? Not something as big as their country sacrificing their rights and their freedoms for them so that only a few people can have the say, but what if all of us gave something of ours, something like your time, your gifts, and your values, so that little by little, many people's small contributions that they gave willingly will come together and make a whole. In my perception, this idea is controversial and to a point dystopian. But the values, the bare values, speak towards giving some of us towards the future. Thank you.